Michelle Tafoya, NBC Sunday Night Football sideline reporter, past tense. She worked her fifth Super Bowl on Sunday on NBC in Peacock, a four-time winner for a Sports Emmy, Outstanding Personality Sports Reporter, former colleague at NBC, and not retiring, but uh, what was it like when you walked off the field for the final time? Oh, my gosh, Dan. Hi. Hi. Um... I'll tell you something. I, I had kept it together and kept it together because, you know, I've been planning on this for years now. And then I decided as I was leaving, you know, maybe I should just sort of look back at where I am walking away from and look back at the field and just sort of take it in and remember this. And I lost it. I lost it. Um, I didn't like sob, but I, I cried. I, uh, I look back. I, that stadium is beautiful. at SoFi, as you know. It was still full of energy and people and and I just looked at the lights and I looked at the field and I said, I'm not gonna be back like this here again or at any stadium for that matter. And I kinda I kinda like the whole thing sort of flashed before my eyes. It was it was it was a moment, um, sort of bittersweet, uh, but amazing. How physically demanding it, it, take us onto the field. You're trying to get Aaron Donald after the game and yeah. how does that work where your game ends and then all of a sudden it's chaos they tell you and i when i say they the team's pr staff your camera crew your sideline producer everyone that's helping says you stand here we'll get aaron and you're standing there and it's my nature to go chase the guy down myself because it's like where is he <laughs> you know so i am we got to get this done so it's um you know, it can be physically, it is chaotic, but you don't care because you're, you're, you're single-mindedly pursuing this, this person and thinking about what you're going to ask. And so it, you care less about the chaos. You see right through it somehow and you just, you just get it done. But I will say I was talking to him and when McVeigh came up behind him to hug him, my arm was stuck between them. That was a little bit of an uncomfortable <laughs> moment. It was kind of a weird sort of position to be in. And how much time do you know you have with Aaron Donald post game on the field? I did. I really didn't know, Dan. Um, I didn't know. I, I know someone in my ear will will go wrap it, you know, if I'm going too long. But for me, it's as, as long as it's compelling and as long as it's, uh, you know, you don't want to keep the guy forever. He wants to go be with his teammates. You know, you have a job to do, but you're trying to be sensitive to all those elements of the moment. And um so I knew it was going to be three questions, maybe four max. And I think that's what we did. But also, you know, you have something because he's crying. And then yeah. you, you want to be sensitive to him being sensitive himself. Uh, and there's that fine line of, am I milking this? And how do you judge that? Um, you, you just put it really nicely. You don't, you don't want to milk it. You don't want to be like, you, let's just see how much we can get him to cry. But you do want to let him be authentic. Uh, you want to know what's behind the tears. You, you obviously, on a human level, we all know what's there, right? It's this moment of incredible victory, of a lifetime of waiting for just this. You know that's all there. You don't want to put that into his mouth. You want to ask him. You want him to tell you what it is. So you're trying to find clever ways to get there. Um, and at the same time, let him let him talk about that final play, because that that did the game in. That iced it, right? So. Um, it, there's just a, I don't know, it's a balancing act that, and you never get it perfectly right, but you try. And then Rodney Harrison pregame says, Hey, wouldn't be surprised if Aaron Donald walks away. And I'm like, wait, Rodney's now an insider. And I was going to text him to say, Rodney, do you know what you just said? Because now it's a part of the game. And even yeah. afterwards, uh, you know, are you thinking, can I ask him? Should I ask him? How do I ask him about retiring? Yeah, and I had to, because if you don't, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't in that minute, Dan, because if people, if you don't ask, you get criticized. When you do ask, you get criticized, but I had to. Um, and, and in fact, I used it in my open, too, because Rodney had reported that to us, that he was thinking about, you know, look, if I win this thing, maybe I'll go away and, and call it a career. So we used that in my opening on camera, and then you've got to bookend it. You have to ask the question. You just, and and I thought, it was kind of telling that he said, I'm 
just going to soak this in for now. And I totally respected that. And I knew we probably weren't going to get a definitive answer. But, you know, when I did my first Super Bowl, it was Pittsburgh. Jerome Bettis was thinking about retiring. And I did a, I recorded my post game interview with him. He told me he was going to retire. And then they, they ditched my recorded interview with him and grabbed someone to do it live. I think it was Tariko who stole that moment. So, <laughs> so, you know, and so I was just going to, I was going to ask. More likely to walk away, Aaron Donald or Sean McVay? Aaron Donald. I mean, if I, if I had to weigh those, this, you know, we asked Sean McVay about that on Saturday. We had a final conference call with him and he's like, shoot, they asked me, you know, am I going to do this till I'm 60? Well, so, but, but then I've also seen some interesting little, or I should say picked up on some interesting vibes coming out of industry folks that think, you know, he has an opportunity to go do what John Gruden once did, which is walk away from coaching for a while, do some TV, relax. And he, he's young enough. He could go back to coaching again. My gosh, he's a Super Bowl champion. I was told that this morning by a source who said there's interest on both sides with ESPN and Sean McVay. Yep. And my source said, I don't know if it's a leverage play. Same thing with Aaron Donald. I don't know if this is a leverage play. Same thing with Kyler Murray with what's going on with him. Leverage yeah. play. It, well, with Kyler, it would seem more of a leverage play. He's so early in his career. And we were talking about Aaron Donald and how great he is. But think about, you know, guys that did walk away when they were at their prime and they were still able to enjoy the rest of their lives. I mean, Aaron Donald has worked his, you know, am I allowed to say ass off on your show? Yes, you just did. Okay. Okay. He's worked his ass off for so long. I thought one of the things he said in the interview was so sweet. He said, I promised my five-year-old daughter that I would win a Super Bowl. And now he's delivered that to her. Maybe he's promising her more, more daddy daughter time too. We don't know that. And so, you know, for a guy who just his whole life is about work and staying fit, maybe he's ready. Who knows? Yeah. But maybe he buys her a couple of ponies, Michelle, and he continues to play. I mean, if I, if you say to your five-year-old, do you want a couple of ponies or do you want daddy to be home all the time? I know what my five-year-old would have said. Ponies. No. Oh, she oh wants... of course not. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Listen, cash, mom. I don't, don't yeah. buy the pony. Give me money. <laughs> Give me the American Express card and I'm good. No, you know, I do remember my daughter once uh, I came home from the end of a season and there was a note on my desk that said, I'm so glad football season is over. Oh. And, you know, it, it, it just yanked it. It was like, oh my gosh, you don't think your kids are thinking about that, but they are. They, they love you being around. Um, I, everyone has their own story. So I'll be really eager to see what Aaron does. He's a phenomenal player. He, look, he's achieved about everything you can achieve, right? What, what do you have left to do except, I guess, make more money? Michelle Tafoya, NBC Sunday Night Football sideline reporter. Uh, Odell Beckham and that storyline post game for you. Uh, the importance of, of hearing from OBJ was, was what? Well, I, I, we didn't get to hear from him. I, I didn't get to see it either. Dan, what did he say post game? Was there a, was there somewhere that he spoke? Because what I saw was he came back out onto the sideline dressed in, you know, his sweats. I saw him celebrating. I, he didn't, he looked happy, but for a guy who had caught a touchdown in the, in the Super Bowl, And then, you know, you saw it happen. It's one of those, no one hit him. It was non-contact. It was this, this moment. If the guy has torn his ACL again, I, I'm crushed for him. We had a really great discussion with OBJ the, the week of the Super Bowl, where he confessed a lot of stuff about how the catch in New York was a blessing and a curse. Be careful what you wish for, because it changed his life, both good and bad. Um, how he was too young, maybe, for that all that attention in New York City. Um, what happened in Cleveland, how he felt when he left Cleveland, how much soul searching he did, and how he's really, he feels he's grown up a lot from all of those things. It was a truly compelling interview with him that we had. And so we were all a little heartbroken for him not to be able to finish that game. I was also wondering about him in the media. You know, this is another knee injury. Uh, Good looking guy, charisma. Yeah. Could you see him in a, in a studio environment? That's a great point. I could, because I, I don't think people understand how, how deep this kid is as the thinker. 
And um, because you don't get that opportunity very often to just sit down with a guy with no cameras around and just talk. And that's what we did with him during the week when we went up to Rams practice. And it was, we were all just like spellbound. I mean, we were all just, I, I don't want to exaggerate, but we were all, I don't know that people were taking notes because we were just listening and absorbing what this guy's been through. And it was fascinating. Now, I think he can find a way to channel that. He is a good looking guy. He's got a lot of accomplishments uh, on his resume. He knows the game. Um, people, he, he can, you can think of him as a polarizing character. I think he's going to come around to being a beloved character. Well, we've seen wide receivers do this. Who knew Randy Moss would be a good studio analyst or Michael Irvin right. would be a charismatic guy. Like th this, yeah. ha this happens and it feels like he would be a natural. So let the audience know what is next for Michelle Tafoya. Well, you know, what's gotten picked up the most is that I'm, I'm helping to run a campaign in Minnesota. We've got a guy running for governor there, Kendall Qualls, who I'm very supportive of and am going to be the co-chair of his campaign. Um, Dan, I know this is going to sound corny and dumb. I don't care. I really don't care what people think. Every morning I wake up and there is a palpable pull at my chest like a, a you've got to go do something that helps people out. We are in a bad place in this country. I am the daughter of American dreamers. You know, my dad's a first generation um, Latino here. My mom grew up poor, dirt poor in the depression. My whole family lived the American dream. I, be I believe in it. And uh, I, gotta, I gotta help in whatever way I can. I've taken enough of the American dream. I want other people to believe in it. Um, I want people to be stop being told what they can't do and being told what they can do uh, because the opportunities here are limitless. And I'm tired of people being told, uh, you can't get that. No, it's unfair here. There is a lot of unfairness in life, but there's a lot more opportunity. And I, I, I just need to find a way to help move that along somehow, some way. Uh, it's an honor to have worked with you. And uh... right back at you, Pally. And uh, and good luck, and and hopefully you get that that uh, quality time at home. Because you know I left ESPN, and people said you're crazy, and I said I'm I'm not crazy if I'm going home to my kids. But exactly, you know what? Mix in a Viking game occasionally. Maybe do like a preseason sideline. You know, just to keep ready, just in case, like Tom Brady. I mean, who knows, <laughs> Michelle? Who knows? More likely to come back, you or Tom Brady? Tom Brady. Okay. <laughs> No question. Uh, thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate it. Be well. Michelle Tafoya, NBC uh, Football Night in America sideline reporter.